Welcome to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. This is Chris Miller. I invite you to join me as I interview artists from a variety of disciplines. We'll share powerful stories and lessons learned while making their art. Good day. Welcome to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. This is Chris Miller, your host. I am very excited today. I'm bringing back someone that's been on the show before, um, Waleen Dunn, who has been on my show. And actually, Waleen has had one of the most popular podcast interviews with the most click-through, most listened-to rate of all mine. Um, And we talked about the power of words. And Waleen was terrific. And she talked about choosing the best words and using the proper words when you speak. Um, so I'm here with t- today with Waleen, and we're recording this as a video as well. She is an entrepreneur, an author, and I love this, an innovator. So good morning, Waleen. Good morning, Chris. I am so excited to have you back. I'm excited to be here. I, I love the topics we, we talk about. It's always a rich discussion. It is. It's always a rich discussion. So it's uh, interesting. Willene and I were out to dinner the other day. And one of the things that I, I really get a lot of clarity with Willene is she's very good at, at um, claiming, claiming her good or, or putting forth the intention of good. Um, so I'm going to tell a little story that I've had a recent experience. Um, I took a new position in a corporate job recently, and I noticed that they don't really, um, today, many jobs, they don't teach you. They literally do not teach you what to do. They put you at the desk and they start throwing work at you. Um, What's more interesting is it's kind of your job to find the answer. So they'll ask you about something, you know, they'll say, hey, I need this, I need that. And so I learned to just get on and Google it. You know, I love it. Just Google whatever I'm trying to do, how to uh, file on QuickBooks, how to export a, a file from this program. And there's so many different applications and products out there now that it's overwhelming. But what I noticed after about a week is the most important part of that process was for me to believe that there is an answer. So, that, that, so Willie, and I thought that was really funny. It was like, at first, I was like, well, I don't know how to do this. How can you ask me to do this when you never taught me? And I sat down and I thought, wait a minute. Here I am. You know, we're, we have technology today. We're in front of the computer. We can Google just about anything. We can find answers, different people's thoughts on things. I have all the power right there. And yet I didn't believe it. You know, I, the first couple of days, I was like, what am I going to do? I, this is overwhelming. I, I, I don't know how to handle it. So what I realized, Willeen, is that I had to, um, you know, I had to believe that there was an answer if I asked for it. So that's where I wanted to talk to you. That's why we brought you in is the important part is the intention or rather the belief of, of, of asking for something. And um, Willeen has this wonderful process. Uh, I'm sure many of you have used positive affirmations. Um, you know, uh, life is good, um, all those type of things. But Willene has taken this process to the next level, Willene. And, and I love this. She creates and helps you create what's called a power statement. So Willene, I know it, this kind of branches off of what we talked about earlier was picking the right words, but this is more than just picking the right words. Um, how how right. Can I, can I just talk to you though about what you said? I think that was so powerful. Your, um, your description of that, because yeah, it doesn't matter what words you speak or where you apply yourself. If you don't have a belief that it's possible. And, and I love that you did that because the whole structure of everything we do is based on belief. Right. And that, that was just gorgeous. How you said that, um, because we do have to believe we're going to find the answer. We have to believe that our words matter. We have to believe that if I create a power statement, that by saying it repeatedly, I'm going to receive. It, it really does start in that, in that belief and then aligning that belief with what it is you know and truth and that you're speaking that. I just think that I don't think we should pass over that. I, I just think that's really, that's really a, a perfect outline 
of of this whole um, structure because you know it's like when Henry Ford said, "If you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right." And Ernest Holmes says, "We, um, it's done unto us as we believe." Right? So I just yeah, take that and and expand on it. So if, speaking to the audience here, just going that that is the core. So let's set it up in when we're creating a power statement that you really believe your words can create your world. And when you state this, you're going to show you how going through a step by step, how to really create a powerful statement that if you said it repeatedly, it will bring you what you want. But you do need you do have to believe that it will. Yeah, it's so interesting because, you know, um, I, re- I, I learned to take a pause. And so when my supervisor would say, do this, instead of my initial reaction was, I don't know how or I can't, I took a pause. And I thought, I believe that there's a solution out there. I believe that the answer is here. I just need to see it, right? I need to claim it, see it, attract it. And when I did that, I suddenly found, oh yeah. And and sometimes I'll be honest with you. Sometimes it wasn't on Google. Sometimes I had to walk down the hall and ask another employee or, but the, the belief that's so key, the belief that it is there, anything you could want is there, right? So, uh, so I, I, well, I, love I like to structure it in the idea that, you know, that which is greater than us holds the stars in the sky and the seas and the shore. That's an impossibility. If you measured all the water, it should cover all the earth, but it doesn't. So uh, science has some idea about that, but the truth is that I just believe in that unknown that holds the stars in the sky and the seas in the shore, knowing that that is just an impossibility, then knowing that I could speak a word and have it create something, which is also possibly an impossibility. Impossibilities are happening all the time, every day, right? With consistency. Sun's going up, moon's going, you know, there's always a, the rotate, we have this, this universe that's happening, planets aren't slamming into each other. There is a principle always at work. It's true. And, you know, even though we might not recognize it, you know, when you like talk about a car, there was a time when people did not believe a horseless carriage could be propelled, right? And it was until someone believed in the possibility of this. I love it. Yeah, that suddenly we realized this industry, this whole industry. And so there's so I what I think is so exciting is think about all the other answers that are right out there that we haven't even experienced yet because we're not willing to believe it. I love that. Yes. I mean, and all the things that get created out of just I believe it can happen. You know, when when Ford put the car into motion. Um, the guys came back and said, it's impossible to create a six bit piston. It's impossible. And he said, well, go figure it out because there's no impossibilities, right? right? It's impossible that the seas are in their shores. There's too much water, but it happens. You know, it is the reality that we live in. We live in the impossible. Oh, I love that. I do love that. You know, that, and that's why I loved having you on. I think that's why your initial podcast was so um, well received is it talks about picking the right words and how important that is because that sets up your reality, right? I mean, yeah. you, whatever words you choose, you will experience. And so- Yeah, and I love that too. I mean, let's say it again, we live in the impossible. Right. It's so right. you can believe as we- create this power statement to know that it's impossible. And I'll just be very brief in a story because I also have a story that really, I have several stories that acclaim to that, but one was I had medical bills and I know I told them, told that story in the last, um, the last episode, but they were, they were very large, 200, over 200,000 collectively. And I just did one of these statements that I would only pay $8,000 collectively for all the bills, which include the ER docs and the 
pet pathology, everybody outside of the hospital system, including the hospital system. And in the end, through using a power statement and, and just repeating it every time I got a bill, um, I ended up paying $7,968.63. I mean, it, which is it, way less than they originally told you, right? That yes. You and, and what I wanted to say about that and the impossibility of that is these people who have done math, their, their whole existence of their job is math, completely figured those numbers wrong. And, and it wasn't about them and it wasn't about me. It was about aligning myself with the belief that I only wanted to pay $8,000 and that that was possible that there was a possibility. And I just heard a story this week too, where somebody said, you know, they told me, the doctors told me, um, don't worry about the bills because you'll never live long enough to pay them. And I thought, wow, what if you just created a statement that allowed you the possibility that that is not true? That those bills, you know, why is it that we believe just what we're, we're provided is the reality of the situation. People go, I'm a realist, you know, I owe 217,000 and that's what I owe. Well, if that's what you want to agree to and believe in, right? You want to agree to that, you agree to pay that, then then great. But if you would like to do that different, there's, a, there's an impossible possibility for you. Oh, I, I, I love that. Um... You know, this is something that I always come to you for because uh, I, I think that's a, a challenge for me, uh, listeners, is that I um, oftentimes fall into a rut or, or accept something the way it is. And I'll call Waleen and she'll say, well, what, what, what do you mean? You know, you're, you're an individualized expression of spirit. Spirit's flowing through. You can ask for whatever you want. And I'm like, what? <laughs> right? And, and, and it, it makes, and, but you're right. And so um, I, I think these power statements, this, this learning to put a statement out that will help attract what you desire. And sometimes, right, I don't even know if you know how it will come, right? Or, or what it will look like. I, uh, yeah, no, the how's none of our business, right? And that's the hard thing for people to believe in is that I don't have to do it, that I can actually combine my word and my ideas with that which holds the stars in the sky and the seas in the shore, because that is an impossibility. So can I believe that my potential impossibility can be made possible through my alignment? I say that, I love that. I, I was gonna say, say that again. <laughs> I'm not sure I can. <laughs> <laughs> my possible impossibility can be brought to the possible through, but you're right. In my alignment with that which holds the stars in the sky and the seas in the shore. You know, that's my favorite statement now because it reminds me that the impossible is happening all the time. The us breathing in and breathing out. We don't have to, we don't have to turn our eyes on our nose on our, none of that. That's all happening for us. So if you can believe that just your very existence is happening for you, do you not believe that you can take a medical bill that's exorbitant and never you could never fathom being able to pay that and then structure a statement that aligns that impossible thing with the possible alignment with that which holds the stars in the sky and the seas in the shore. So let's, let's do one. Oh, okay. Let's talk about the steps. And um, you know what? I, 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 I see, I get off on these, but uh, one of the things I did put in my book that, that ties into this is uh, recognizing your wholeness. And I think that's part of this belief is, and because I, I like to tie this into the, to also the creative process. Whenever you're being creative, whether you're creating a painting or writing a book or, or writing a song or whatever, creating a podcast, part of that is knowing that the answer is there. You are whole right now. There's a, there's a solution and believing it, you know, believing it. And so I realized also when I was painting that if I approached the easel with any thought of lack, right, I'm not good enough. I sure enough got a painting that was not good enough. Yeah. But if I approach the painting with this wonderful groundedness, and that's why I encourage people to do a short meditation before they enter into any creative process, all of a sudden the possibilities are there, right? And suddenly I, I believe, if I believe it's, it can be a beautiful painting or whatever, it will be, right? Right. So, well, that's another podcast, right? 
how we <laughs> how how we believe is what we receive, you know, and and that's the alignment. So when you talk about this power statement and we're talking about belief, that really is a core thing. Is that if you're believing in the negative, if you're focused on condition, and I think that's a good place to put this too. So it's either condition or what you want. And if you're focused on your condition, you'll get more condition. So when you're in the condition of, I'm not going to do this well, I never do this well. The, you know, I talk to people, I can't really articulate what I'm saying. I could never be a good speaker. Whatever those words are, they're not just words. You're aligning yourself with that condition. And so that, it basically becomes your power statement for condition. Ooh, or ooh, or we go into this idea of what do I want? And so in creating our power statement that we're going to go through, that is really the core, right? Focusing on what you want, getting very clear about what you want, not so much in the physical, but getting very clear about what you want globally. So when I have this business, I was in a 22-year career in another business, and I just said out loud, I want a job I can do from anywhere and not sit in traffic unless I chose to sit in traffic. And that was it. And two years later, I have that job. I had that job and it was a perfect enfoldment. Like I had a job in between there. It was a perfect setup for how I would do this business. Wow. And that's how, that's how that works in, in that perfect alignment. But I love, I love what you said, because it's, um, it's just a critical point too. If you're focused on your condition, you're focused on the big medical bill, you're focused on, you know, I can't create a great painting. You're focused on, I, I'll never be able to write a book. Those are all focuses in condition. And when you're focused in condition, you get more condition or you'll get the alignment of the condition where you said, you know, when you paint, then you look at it and you go, yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. Well, how could you create anything else but what your, your structure around that is? It's funny, and you think about it, that's per perhaps why children are what I think are the greatest artists, right? Because they're just there. They're ju they just create. They're, they're, they haven't gone through the school of hard knocks yet to have all the belief systems that say, I can't create or I'm not good enough. And so you tell them that you give them a crayon and a piece of paper, and right? It, the possibilities are there. So Well, and you said one time, I, rem I remember this, we were just in a conversation, and you said, you know, because when you walk into a room of children under the age of five and you say, who can sing in the room? They all put their hand up. That's who can, right. is an artist? They all put their hand up because they believe they are. And it is not until they've experienced something different or had someone tell them something different that they become less than that what they believe they can do because they're all artists under the age of five. They're all singers at, under the age of five. Right. They can do it all. So I love that. I, I like that you brought that up because that's fun. That's also getting back to that idea of the impossible and that belief, tying that together and knowing it's all possible when you believe it's possible. You know, I have to say, I watched that movie. I'm not giving the movie a plug, but hello, my name is Doris. And when she goes into this meeting and there's the guy speaking and he says, it's not the word impossible. It's the word I'm possible i am possible right wow. i'm possible so that's just a way to take a condition that feels negative impossible and turn it to i see it differently i see the vision in that i'm possible yeah you know um it, it, I, I think that's wonderful you have to see that and you have to believe it and know it and and and, and i would like just tell all the listeners right now because i believe this and i know this is that possibilities are there for you, whatever you want to do. And, and I, I, I have artists come to me all the time and they'll say, oh, I'm a really good painter, but I couldn't do, I couldn't do 3D modeling. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Right? If you're creative here, you're going to be creative over here. We are all creative. And so it's funny how we want to get ourselves into a, I can write, but I couldn't draw or, or I can sing, but I can't paint. I mean, we have these lines. And so get, get back to being five, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You led so, me through that. I know that's not what we're talking about today, but you kind of led me through that when I was writing an exercise out and I thought, you know, I, 
So I like to draw things that I see. Well, I can see things and everything. Like I, I see pictures in my floor and walls and, you know, all the textures. And, and yet I've convinced myself that I couldn't draw that. Like I need to take a lesson or I need to go, you know, get and get some artist to show me how to bring that out. And I, and I thought, well, you said, well, what were you good at when you were five? And I thought I was really good at looking at things and drawing them. <laughs> so, and yet, you know, I spend all my time going, gosh, I wish I could look at that and draw it. It's what I'm good at, but I stopped practicing it because I started believing I needed a class that would help me to take that, what I saw. And so anyway, more belief, right? But we can, we can create those statements then. So we're in condition, even from that statement, you're in condition around your art, we're in condition. So what do we do to move us? We create a power statement that helps support us to believe differently. Right. So let's do exactly. That. So let so I will tell the listeners, um, don't don't panic. Um, after this, you can go to my website, Spiritual Artist Today, and download a worksheet with these steps. So don't feel like you have to pull out your pencil and write down everything Willene is talking about. Um, we're gonna just right go through the process of this these steps that that uh, you've outlined as part of helping you define a power statement. So um, let's go. What's number one? <laughs> So number one, um, and, and remember, this is not so that you can create a result. This is not so that you can feel, think, do, so that you're doing something. This is how you align with that which is greater than you. And we do that through a power statement. So you start with visualize exactly what you want and the completion of it. So do you have something you want to do that way? <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, I do. And I'm going to use this. I, I'm, I'm determined to build the followership on YouTube. And, okay. and so I, I, I probably limited myself, but I said, I want at least 2000, I want 2000 subscribers by year end. No, that was kind of what I decided I want. Um, I don't know if what you think, I don't know if I'm limiting it, but 2000, or, or should I say, you would probably tell me, Chris say 2000 or more. <laughs> right. And, and you don't have to ask me, are you limiting? Because the minute you said it, you realized you were limiting. I know. By not saying it more. So, so let's take that then. And um, so you, you kind of have a statement, but let's go to the first part to visualize exactly what you want, the completion of it. So just in your mind's eye, you, you take a moment and you see your screen, you see YouTube and you see your subscribers are 2000 or more you see that you just visualize that you 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 get into that space of okay that's done like i'm in complete belief there's no impossibility with that and there's nothing i need to do so step two is you see yourself having the thing you desire create a mental picture the so same thing really in alignment with the visualization getting really clear about what you want and then you see it so you're really clear about you you're looking at that screen and you see it's done it's already done um no so that's effort part, that's part of like that term creating a mental equivalent um and that's where sometimes it's like we talk about sitting down quietly closing your eyes and in my mind's eye seeing this screen with all these followers and, and i'm gonna i'm gonna see it. i already see it higher <laughs> So I already see more than that. I'm, I, I, I see 20,000, but I, I do, I see 20,000, but so I can see it on the screen. I see people engaged, talking back and forth. I see them sharing these videos that are so helpful. So yeah. Okay. I think it, it well, how does that help? How, how does that help it, you by seeing it? Well, well, it, it does exactly what you did. So if you, you're sitting and you're concentrating that you're going through this process, then it allows you to get bigger, to expand out just by you saying it, right? Created a new goal and a new vision. So now it's 20,000. And, and that's what this process will do. If you, you will go through it, it'll allow your mind to expand out because you'll know limitation, just like you did when you said it, you're like 2000. <laughs> I'm at 200,000. I, you know, if I'm going to believe in the impossible. Oh, I love this. Listeners, I'm take a I'm going to believe that in the impossible being possible with my alignment to it, 
how do I get in alignment if my belief is 2000? I'm going to believe in the impossible. I'm going to go so far beyond that I'm going to say 200,000 by year. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I love this because this goes back to that saying, right? Um, it's just our belief that's holding me back. Right. And so you can create, what was the saying? You can create an anthill as much as a mountain or something like that. It's a castle and a button. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, anthills, castles, right? Go ahead. Say it. What, what, yeah. How does it go? So, it, you know, it's Abraham Hicks and she said, you can create a castle just as well as you can a button. And I, I think Dr. Joseph Murphy says, you can make snow as much as you can make grass. Like we actually have the ability to create um, just like the creator holds the stars in the sky and the seas in the shore. That is our, that is on our DNA, mm -hmm. but it gets worked out of us. Just like going back to the five-year-old who can sing everybody. So we, the, with the power statement, the creative process of creating a power statement does it helps you reconnect to that idea that the impossible is happening around me all the time. Can I believe in the impossible and align myself with the possible creator? Oh. Oh, wow, this is good stuff in this. Huh. So, so as you were going back to what you said, so when I do that, when I visualize it, I it tests it. I can see where there's limitations. I can see, I can, I feel it. I feel the experience when I see it. Um, good. Yeah. And so then the third is write a statement that emphasizing the feeling of completion. So getting into that feeling space, um, how, do, how does it feel when you look at the 200,000 followers? It's December 24, and it's going to be your Christmas present to you. <laughs> And you open that YouTube and you see 200,000 followers. It's so funny. Does, I, feel it, I, feel? I, I feel it in my upper chest, right? I feel it in my upper chest. I feel this excitement. I feel, you know what it feels like? It feels, it feels uh, not, not in an, a greedy way. So listeners, I don't want you. It feels powerful, empowered. Let's say empowering because powerful it, uh, almost implies control over someone else. So I would rather say it feels empowering. Yeah, because, oh my gosh, how how cool is it that, you know, it's not by your activity, but yet by your word that you allow it to happen. So when you're sitting there, I mean, I would feel excitement, this excitement that the excitement really is the knowing that you can create the impossible through through just connecting to what's already impossible made possible, seas and shore, stars and sky. You know, and and I love that. So I feel that for you. I mean, I can see 200,000. You're like, and the thing is, please hear me. You do not have to do it. You, so one of the questions for me, and I think this is important here, is following this. So we've heard before, treat and maybe feet, like say a prayer and, and get in activity, um, but make sure it is inspired activity. This is a very important point. If you're focused on condition through action, so I'm focused on, I don't have those. I'm getting very close. It's, it's December one and I don't have my 200,000 followers. What do I have to do? You have to go back to your power statement. Do not sit down and, and, and try to figure out because that's not how this works. You do not have to do this. The how is not up to you. Just like when you plant the seed, it is not your job to make it grow. There's nothing in you that could do that. That's just being so clear that there is an impossible force. There's a creator beyond you that can support that seed that grows every plant, stars in the sky, seeds in the shore. I mean, it's so important. But if you are doing if you are doing action out of condition, then it's not going to work for you. So if you have the condition of I'm not enough. I don't have enough. It's December one. How is that going to happen? What do I have to do? You're in condition. So you go right back to your power statement that puts you back in the focus of what you want. So that by stating that repetitively, you are staying focused on what you want so that that which is greater than you can support that in happening because you don't have to know the how. Mm. I love that. I love that. So so 
when you say going back to condition, if I sit there and I start thinking, oh my gosh, I got to call everybody or, oh my gosh, I, I, I better do something or, you know, that that's coming from fear and, and lack and suddenly my whole energy, I can feel it even saying it suddenly I, I feel the shift. So you just go right back to your statement and affirm and you just worded it so wonderful, <laughs> but you affirm what you want and you get back into that. That yeah, and so given it, I want to give an example of inspired action versus um, conditional action. So we did we did the conditional action. So I don't have I'm December one. I only have nineteen thousand followers. I have two two hundred thousand. Then your temptation would be, well, nineteen thousand is good enough. No, no, <laughs> you said and stay in alignment, right, with what it is you wanted. Um, but there's the other side of that, what inspired action looks like. When I walked out of my bedroom on Thursday morning, last Thursday, I had this thought in my head to call someone to ask them what they were reading. I didn't know they were reading anything, but I just had this idea that she was, and I needed to know it. That was inspired action because there was no activity that was moving me. There was no negative action or condition that was moving me to, to that thought. I just had it. So when I called, um, she was reading something and it was perfect for the moment. Um, and it actually was perfect for this call because it's what led me even closer to this idea of the impossible. It was the story of David and Goliath. And it wasn't that most people believe in this story that it was a, his, David's job was to go kill the giant. You know, and let's just say, if you don't believe in biblical principle, you can just believe that it's a story. And But the part of the story that gets left out a lot is that David was promised something. So his focus was not on going to kill the giant. His focus on what was what he wanted, which is what he was promised. He was promised to receive the prince, the, the king's daughter in marriage and was also promised that he would not have to pay taxes and his family would never have to pay taxes. So when he went out there, his focus was not on the condition of that giant's too big for me. I'll never kill that giant. He was focused on what he wanted. And that was, I'm going to get the princess's hand in marriage and my family's never going to have to pay taxes again. So that's the principle of this thing, right? Mm -hmm. That's lovely. Uh, you it reinforced it with a biblical story. <laughs> that is great. So yes, yes, he, he wasn't okay. focused on how he was going to do it or or the impossibility of it or the, right. so it's a, it, so whether you look at it literally or metaphorically, metaphorically, it's a lesson on how we approach big, overwhelming issues or something that could be big or overwhelming issues. I'm going to soften it yeah. in our life, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, so we're really drawing this picture of if you're, if you're focused on condition and pursuing activity out of condition, that'll become burdensome. You'll have to figure it out. Well, that's not what you want to be connected to. You want to be connected to that, which is greater than you. And the way you do that is staying focused on what you want. So then the fourth step, this, the fourth step in the creative um, power, creating a power statement is limit the statement to one sentence so now you you said at one point you wanted to create 2000 but let's let's go with where you are now and and don't make it the i want to create right because that puts it in your your hand so condition. right that's in the condition so i had a thought going just stepping back real quick um yeah. When you do limit it to one sentence, you know, we talked about seeing myself, step two, seeing myself with that mental picture. I have to admit, I can, I feel it. And, and, and I think part of when you see it in your mind's eye is feel, I can feel 20,000. But if I jump to 200, I, I suddenly feel, I can feel my body kind of go, oh. And, and so I think, I think it's important that we set, we, we have to work within whatever comfort zone we have at this time, knowing yeah. that we can, we can practice expanding it later. Right. So I, I, I just wanted to share that when you're limiting it to one sentence, make sure it's it's. What would you say comfortable? Would you say that it's that, that I don't know how to say that, but. Well, and maybe you can just drop that. Maybe you do a little work 
um, on dropping that I can't get over the 20,000 because, <laughs> because in the work that you would do is get back to stars in the sky and seas in the shore. It's an impossibility. 200,000 for Chris's Chris is impossible. So you don't have to do it. That's the whole thing. So what you, what you just did was saying, I can see 20,000 mm -hmm. because you still have you attached to it. Okay. All right. All right. Oh. You still have you attached to it thinking, okay, well, you know, she's going to give me out this vote of 2000, which I know I can do. <laughs> we'll go to 20,000, which I can probably, I can ah. probably still do, but 200,000, I have to get connected with that, which was oh, no way. <laughs> That's so, very valid. Okay. All right. So, All that's, right. so that's the work, right? The work then is to really expand your belief, to really get into, and that's why I use that. Stars are just hanging in the sky. They're just hanging there. They should be falling down. There's no nothing that holds them there. There's no strings, you know, and the seas and the shore, the water would cover the earth. If, if something hadn't been spoken, for those to be like the power statement was made when that which is greater than us said, you will stay here and you will stay here. And so, so go for the 200,000 and let's okay. do another All one right. of these and, and report <laughs> how you stayed completely focused, which was interesting with the medical bills. I never had, I never went to a filling space that $8,000 was impossible. Um, I, and, and and I just didn't, I really didn't have an equivalent to that ever being impossible for me. So I didn't have an impossibility on when I said these $215,000 of medical bills that I only went to pay $8,000 collectively for all of these bills. And then also, you know, giving gratitude, which will keep going through our steps. But, and then I said, thank you for saving my life because I want everyone always honored in every process. Certainly, I wanted to pay them something. I do believe that if I had said they're zero, I truly believe that I would not have had to pay anything. But I didn't want to do that. Like I consciously chose to make eight thousand my goal. Oh. <coughs> Sorry. Bless you. <coughs> edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> so limit it to one sentence. Limited right. to one sentence. And the sentence cannot include any negative words. Okay. And so none of the, none, well, first of all, none, it can't, it also can include the I, you know, oh. because you're, you've got to, you're, you're going beyond the I, you're going beyond what you can create. You're stepping into what the universe, what that would support you can create. So stay out of the I and, and also um, no negative words. Okay. And, and then it, and it's a, a- So what would that look like in your statement, Chris? I don't know. I don't know how to say it without I. Um, and I'm, jump, I'm, 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 there's a couple other statements, which is, you know, don't make anything. The statement cannot include any unfinished, open-ended or to-do action. And then you're also saying, begin with the word, no, this is what I know. So I, I, that and you, helps you me. Say we did put, we did put in this, that it does say, I know. So we kind of skipped, right? That's right. Seven begin, begin the word with knowing. So you can say, I know, but you don't want to say I create. Okay. Okay. You, you can tie yourself to the belief. I think that's important. Like I know this to be true. I know that two hundred thousand followers. <laughs> You're keeping me with that two hundred thousand, aren't you? I know that I that the Spiritual Artist Podcast has two thousand two hundred thousand followers on YouTube by year end. How's that? Yeah. Is that good? I like it. I know. So say it again. So I know that the Spiritual Artist Podcast has 200,000 subscribers by year end. It's, it's short, right? It's important that it's not, and I know it. And so when I say, I, I'm going to close my eyes for a minute and I say, you know, I know, I'm seeing it at the same time. I know that the Spiritual Artist Podcast YouTube channel has 200,000 subscribers by year end. 
Okay. All right. I, I can say it. And I didn't, I didn't feel an energy waver, <laughs> right? So, you know, that is one of the clues. So when I was saying that $8,000 collectively for all these bills, like the, the only inspired action I got in that process, I did make a call um, to say, what I, is there something I need to do? So I did get inquisitive because I heard, you know, just ask the question. So I said, is there something, it wasn't out of condition though. It was just out of, is there something I need to know physically from them? And they just, uh, they asked me to send them a couple of um, statements, which I did. And that was it. So the rest of the time, it was really about me not going to a negative feeling space, not doing any negative. So every time I got a bill, I would just, with that bill, the minute I saw it, no, no feeling fluctuation, because I know, right, I knew that I only wanted to pay $1,000 collectively for all these bills, and it would go in a drawer. And then three months later, you know, that was the end result of that. But there was no negative feeling. Uh, there was no conditional um action it was all the inspired action and then just knowing so i love that so say it again <laughs> i know that the spiritual artist podcast youtube channel has two hundred thousand subscribers by year end yes fantastic and so every time i will read that for the listeners so what we was saying is every time she got a statement if she even if she felt a little of that fear she just said her power statement over and over i guess over once or how many times, Willine? I mean, you know, for me with that one, I had such a knowing about it that it was done. I I never had a, I never had a thought that that was an impossibility. Mm. So I mean, I didn't go to all the structural impossibility that you know they're not going to give that to me. People don't people don't do medical bills like that. I it just never I never even thought that 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 was impossible just knew that it would be so so um so i just would do it once and put it in the drawer i mean when i got a bill that was kind of every time i got a bill i only want to pay eight thousand dollars collectively for all these bills collectively thank you for saving my life you know i gave the thanks because there was such gratitude um for a team of people that honored my life and took care of me that's that's interesting um, and and should that be added should we say give gratitude or say thank you or well certainly i think i think at the end you, so do your statement and add a gratitude on it or could i say i know that i'm grateful uh, i well i know that the spiritual artist podcast has 200,000 subscribers by year end thank you or, and i am grateful and i'm grateful and i am grateful i like that and i am grateful um, you know, the, I remember it just brought up that Edwin Gaines used to do this, you know, I am, I am happy and grateful that, you know, and that was, that was one of those statements. I think in the one command, they do that. They started that way. I am happy and grateful that the spiritual wow. artist podcast has, so you can start there or you can end it with that. And I am grateful. Um, oh, I like that. Or, I am happy, or I am that. happy and grateful that. I am grateful that the Spiritual Artist Podcast has 200,000 subscribers by year end. Okay. Yeah. So, however, when you leave out the I know part, yeah, and you hold the conviction there, so it may fall at the end where, and I am grateful, because that just kind of wraps it up with a bow, right? <laughs> I know that the Spiritual Art of, Art, Artist Podcast has 200,000 subscribers by year end. And I am grateful. I love it. I love it. Me too. So begin with the word, no, I know. And then declare it first thing in the morning and the last thing at night when you go. Um, you sent me something recently that I just use constantly now with people, which is, I don't even know how you say the guy's name, but <laughs> Charles Boyden. Uh -huh, um, yes. Yeah, there's a technique. And I actually... Um, if you're in agreement, I'll send that to you written out with the written, and maybe you can post that as well. Okay. Give, give the audience an opportunity to read that because I think it really solidifies this process. It's kind of like being in that sleepy state when you, so you can be impressed more. Your subconscious mind can be impressed more with what it is you're saying. 
So if you are having trouble with the belief of the impossible, you can get in a drowsy, sleepy state and then stay before you go to bed at night. Um, when you're just laying there quiet, I know the Spiritual Artist Park Podcast has 200,000 subscribers by year end, and I am grateful. I know. And that just really gets it in, doesn't it? It just, it just brings, and I'm in it's agreement like, with you now. <laughs> it's almost like it gets around your conscious mind. It, it bypasses the critical conscious mind and goes into the subconscious. And I just re rem re remembered something that I want to share with the listeners is that actually Willine helped me create a power statement when I wrote my book. And it was, you know, I will have written this book and I said it every night and every morning. And I, I sure enough, it did, it, you know, like we talked about in that state, like when you're just waking up or when you're slowly falling asleep and I, you know, I have written the, the spiritual artist book, it's complete and it's all, it's published. I have published the spiritual artist book and it's like, and sure enough, it happened. And, um, I'll, I'll share, I, I've talked about this before with the listeners is I journal. Um, it's a great practice. Um, it's from the artist's way that I learned that, but journaling in the morning, I don't keep up with it every day <clears throat> sometimes, but I go back and I did, I look back at my journal like two years ago and I was like, oh my gosh, I did claim it. I claimed that book into existence. I knew that book into existence. And, and that's why this, this podcast, this interview is so wonderful because it is about the creative process in any realm, right? Like you said, any possibility. You know, Dr. Joseph Murphy says that he has this master key to wealth. So the master key is, is if you repeat something over and over and over, it impregnates the subconscious mind to go and do that. That That's where it connects you with that, which is impossible, made possible by stars in the sky, seas in the shore, all that impossibility. Now you're connected because you're stating something on a regular basis and you're tying yourself to that idea and the alignment with that idea. So what he says is I'm writing on my subconscious mind, the idea of God's wealth. God is the source of my supply and the, and the life source within me. And I know I'm alive and all my needs are met in every moment in time, point of space. It's too long for, you know, <laughs> for most people to remember, but I did memorize it because he said that if you state this regularly and often, that will be your reality. So I just want to say, and I, it, just like this, folks, if you state regularly what you don't want, that will also be your reality. So when you think about it, when you think about the idea of I'm, I'm one of those statements, I just get it. Well, just when I get ahead, something else happens. That is also a power statement. And that is what you will receive. And I know you can go back in your life and actually look at that, how that's happened for you. And you actually think that it's because that is just happening. No, you're speaking it into existence. You're saying that just when you get out and ahead, something else is coming up behind it. Welcome to your world. Ouch. <laughs> Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, ouch. And it helps remember then I want to be careful about what I say because that is creative too. So you can't look at it just one way that if I say these great things, great things will happen. But if you also say negative things, those things will happen too. It's the same principle at work. You can't separate the two. Yeah? Very much. Very much. So... It so the next, yeah, the next step after declaring it uh, is stated aloud when any appearance of lack or resistance appears throughout the day. So if you get, you know, if, if today you, no subscribers come and, you know, nothing's happening, you just immediately go back to, I know, I know, I claim, I declare, you know, you can use, you can use all of those words. I claim, I declare, I know that the Spiritual Artist Podcast has 200,000 subscribers and more. Oh, I love it. Now we're going to stretch it, right? <laughs> it has to 200,000. You're sneaky like that, aren't you? <laughs> it has 200,000 followers and more. I'm grateful. Yeah. <coughs> so, Wonderful. So state it out loud when there's resistance. And here's the thing. 
Um, resistance will happen. It can happen externally. When I, when I was working on buying my house, it took longer than some things. The medical bills, three months. Some things take two days. Some things take a week. Um, but this took a lot, lot longer because I kept having resistance. My mind kept thinking, how am I going to make the money? How am I going to bring the funds in? How am I going to get my credit? How am I did all of that? How am I going to do this? And here's the thing. all If you'll just sit and think about all the really great things in your life that have happened, you've had no construct in it other than maybe your word, like your perfect partner showing up. You were just at the grocery store and you happened to drop something and there they were. You know, it's not, that was not a planned thing. There was nothing you could do or construct that. But maybe you said, I want to meet my perfect partner. And then you're led to the grocery store and it was the perfect unfoldment, right? That's how you connect to this impossible made possible. And, and as far, uh, that's a great example because you meet so many people that claim that they're having trouble meeting their perfect partner. And I think they need to examine their, their thoughts on it. But do they say, but I've been through a lot of relationships or, but I don't, I can't find what I want, you know, right? Did they speak at the same creative process do they yeah. undermine what their true goal is? Are they speaking out of condition and experience, a pattern, or are they speaking in power statement that says what they want? And then when, when they do say to somebody, well, I haven't met them yet. Well, wait, but I know my perfect partner is, show, is showing up quickly, or I know my per perfect partner is here now, and I am grateful, right? And so then... The last statement, of course, is no, it's done. No, it's done. And then go back and repeat this if you need to. I mean, certainly you want to repeat it regularly. And I'll, I'll tell the brief story. Um, in, the, in the Bowden technique, he states that when you do this in a sleepy state and you say something repeatedly, there was a woman who had a lawsuit pending with her husband had died, left everything to her, but yet the kids wanted part of the estate so they sued her and she got into this space knowing that the divine intelligence the divine gives it is in harmony perfect harmony and completes it is done it is finished in divine through divine intelligence it's finished it's done so she would repeat that it is finished in divine order it is finished in divine order knowing that that lawsuit right she she knew what that was when she said it she knew what she meant it is finished in divine order. She did it for 10 days. And then on the 11th day, the attorney of the opposing side called her attorney. And he called her and said, we're complete. This is, this is going to be finalized through harmony. And I want to tell a real quick personal story where this happened. It happened very quickly. I'd gotten into a conflict with a client. And I really enjoyed working with this client. He's important to me. And yet what happened was we got off um, there was some belief on his side that that I was doing some things that were not in his belief system, but that was his mind. He got involved in that condition, right? He was seeing some things and making up some stuff. And so then I just quit. I quit the conversation and started saying what I wanted. And what it is I wanted in that situation was him and I, and I said his name, I want peace and harmony with him. And I know it to be so. And I could have turned that to say, I know I have peace and harmony with, right? And said his name. But then, then we waited and in about a week, we scheduled an appointment to talk. And he said back to me, he said, you know, all I've been saying in my mind is, I just want peace and harmony. And we concluded that and we're going to continue to work together. Because you know, because then, you know, even bigger than when we connect ourselves, which is greater than us, we're connected to the collective, the thought process. So when I think of you, Chris, and I say in my mind, Chris has 200,000 followers on the Spiritual Artist podcast subscribers, and I'm grateful. Now I'm tying myself to you in agreement, which is if you take that biblically, it says, you know, we're two or more gathered together. In my name, whatever you ask of me is done. So we can ask personally, but even if if you can't believe it for yourself, if you can't get to that, we do this for each other, you and I do. 
if, if I can't get to something. And, and the reason I, I even have the Bowdoin technique is because when I was talking to you about, I can't do this. And you said, well, I think this will support you. I think it's also, if you just can't get there, you can go to Chris as a coach. You can come to me as a coach, or you can find a friend that's willing to believe with you in agreement that that's possible for you and help hold you there when you can't. Mm, nice, nice pitch there. Yes, I love it. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to take a minute because I love what you said and, and just ask my listeners a favor. Um, I love that statement. Uh, I believe in a peaceful resolution. And this is a personal concern of mine, something that's bothered me a lot. If everybody could just take a moment after this podcast to think about, I, I, I know, right? This is how I'd say it. I know a peaceful resolution between Ukraine and Russia. I know a peaceful resolution between Ukraine and I know today a peaceful resolution between Ukraine and Russia. Um, that we're not saying how. Right. We're not trying to make it. We're not saying who's right and who's wrong. We're just looking for peace. Right, because that would be in condition, right? If right. you if you you would be back in condition if you're trying to fix it or or trying to determine who's right or who's wrong. You're in condition and you have to be back in the what you want. So what you want is a peaceful resolution for Russia and Ukraine. And I am grateful. Mm, and I'm it grateful. is so, right? It, it is so. It's done. I love this. This has been a great interview. Willie, as I knew it would be. I'm very excited about it. And I'm excited to know and to see all the fruitions of our statements. <laughs> These power statements that are so wonderful. Um, okay, so just to remind you, uh, listeners, you go to Spiritual Artist Today. Um, it'll be the, the web address will be in the bio, but you can go there and you can download the worksheet for this that will remind you of the steps so that you can do it. It also has information for me and Willene, contact information for, for more, if you have questions or you want to concerns or counseling or coaching or whatever. I'm sorry, not counseling, but coaching. Um, it's all there. And uh, gosh, Willene, I'm sure we'll have more, but I love, I love this experience, how we started with choosing the right words and then moving into power statements. And, and we, I even like the word empowering statements. But anyway, yes, it just keeps growing, right? Yes, it does. And it's always an expansion and just, just the way we grow and expand our ideas for each other and with each other. And, and I love that. And I thank you for your support. And I am grateful. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm grateful. Uh, uh, listeners, don't forget to subscribe <laughs> to my Spiritual Artist Today podcast on YouTube. There's a new YouTube channel because we're going to be doing more and more of these interviews live and also be doing my, I call them chat, innovative chat. So Thank you again for listening to the Spiritual Artist Podcast.